sonography of urinary tract infections. The role of ultrasound is in the diagnosis of UTI, follow up and looking for complications of um, infection and uh, also diagnosing the conditions uh, which predispose for urinary tract infection and intervention in case of uh, predisposition condition or complication. Now predisposition conditions are an anatomical abnormality which uh, causes stasis of the urine which predisposes for the uh, infection. It may be congenital like uh, pelviuretric junction obstruction, primary obstructive mega ureter, horseshoe kidney or vesico ureteric reflex or it may be acquired with a cystocele, a vesical diverticulum or a fistula. And it may be iatrogenic uh, like an indwelling catheter, uh, nosocomial infection or following surgery. And it can also be the predisposing condition may be avoiding dysfunction which happens in uh, neurological uh, disease, pelvic floor dysfunction or a high post void residual urine in an enlarged prostate and incontinence. The urinary tract obstruction is also a predisposing condition like any obstruction like bladder outlet obstruction, ureteric stricture or calculi. And uh, rarely there may be other causes uh, like pregnancy, urolithiasis, diabetes and other immunosuppression. The acute diffuse bacterial infection of the kidney otherwise called the acute pyelonephritis is a combination of parenchymal, calicial and pelvic inflammation. Uh, it may be a hematogenous seeding, not uh, that common, uh, causing the infection, but usually it is an ascending infection facilitated by an anomaly, obstruction, vesicoretric reflex, and the causative organism is usually E. coli and uh, more common in diabetics, pregnancy, and after instrumentation or after debilitating disease, and in cases of altered host resistance and drug abuse. Acute pyelonephritis diagnosis is typically, the condition is typically diagnosed on the basis of the clinical symptoms and laboratory findings. Routine radiological imaging is not required for diagnosis and treatment of uncomplicated cases uh, of urinary tract infection. Now, it is a clinical diagnosis made out of abrupt ons onset of chills, fever of about 100 uh, degrees or more and unilateral or bilateral flank pain with tenderness, often accompanied by dysuria, urinary frequency and urgency. There may be nonspecific gastrointestinal symptoms like abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. Add up to this, a positive urine culture of infection results in the clinical diagnosis of acute pyelonephritis. Now, ultrasound um, uh, is required when the patient fails to respond to appropriate therapy within the first 72 hours. Occurs ap approximately only in 5% of uh, cases of acute pyelonephritis. So, its role is also to assess those patients at significant risk for more severe life-threatening complications. Uh, like diabetes, elderly or immunocompromised patients. And uh, it is also uh, useful in to characterize the severity of infection to direct future therapy or interventions, evaluate the extent of organ damage subsequent to uh, resolved acute infection. So, ultrasound is positive in uh, 20 to 25 percent of acute pyelonephritis. Tissue harmonic imaging has reported uh, they improved the sensitivity and specificity. Now this is a coronal scan in a case of um, right flank pain and fever and uh, the left kidney is normal whereas the right kidney is enlarged. So the, the characteristic feature of acute pyelonephritis is, is renal enlargement as seen in the right kidney here and swollen parenchyma which is appreciated well in the transverse scan and changes in echogenicity of the renal parenchyma may be hypochoic due to edema of the parenchyma or hyperechoic due to associated hemorrhage and uh, there is loss of corticomedullary differentiation due to edema and uh, the loss of renal sinus fat 
due to com the edema of the parenchyma compressing the central echogenic area. So these are the characteristic features of acute pyelonephritis along with the clinical symptoms of fever and pain. The differential diagnosis is renal vein thrombosis. So a color doppler uh, will rule out renal vein thrombosis as seen here the renal vein flow is normal. The swelling of the parenchyma is better appreciated and transfer scan as seen here the coronal scan the kidneys almost look normal whereas the transfer scan shows the normal right kidney whereas the left kidney the parenchyma is swollen. So this swelling of the parenchyma is better appreciated in a transfer scan. So coming to the echogenicity of parenchyma we saw the previously it was echo poor but here on the right side you see the parenchyma is echogenic and you see the swollen parenchyma which is appears echogenic along with the clinical features we diagnose acute pyelonephritis. So again the uh, swelling of the parenchyma is uh, well marked here with compression of the central echogenic area which is not well seen and there is also loss of cortico medullary differentiation we don't see the renal medulla. Another feature of acute pyelonephritis with other features is uh, subcapsular perinephric uh, fluid and echogenic perinephric fat as seen here that is echogenic perinephric fat. There may be in some patients um, ipsilateral pleural fluid as a sign of infection. Now real time scan we can see uh, fixation of the kidney as seen here now uh, the spleen moves over the kidney the left kidney is fixed because of the inflammatory adherence. After treatment you see the difference the left kidney and the spleen move together whereas here it, the left kidney is fixed. So that is another feature of acute pyelonephritis on real time. There may be adherence of um, the adjacent organ either liver or spleen to uh, kidney in, which is um, showing acute pyelonephritis. As seen here you see the parking movement of the liver over the kidney because the liver is adherent uh, to the right kidney here. The rest of the liver moves around. So that is another feature of acute pyelonephritis. May be present, not always present. Now pyelitis component of acute pyelonephritis can be seen as uh, urothelial thickening in the calyces and pelvis here as seen here. That is the urothelial thickening in the renal pelvis. Another form of acute um, bacterial infection of the kidney is focal that is acute focal bacterial infection otherwise also called acute focal lobar nephronia. It is an inflammatory mass without drainable pus. It is the causative organism is E. coli. Present patient presents with fever, chills, flank pain more common in females diabetes. On ultrasound, we see it as a poorly defined echopoor mass, absent corticomedullary differentiation associated with the clinical features of fever and flag pain. So here you see the left kidney, you see a poorly defined echopoor mass in the lower pole and in the transverse scan in the posterior parenchyma and uh, absent corticomedullary differentiation. You see the renal medulla here but here you are not able to appreciate uh, the uh, medulla. So that is acute focal lobar nephronia. Another case where you see a poorly defined echopoor mass and absent uh, corticomedullary differentiation. You see the medulla here but you don't see the medulla. Another case of acute focal lobar nephronia better appreciated on high frequency scan. This is the conventional. You see the ill-defined mass on high frequency transverse scan. You see compared with the normal, you see the echogenicity of the parenchyma and the loss of cortico medullary differentiation. These are the medullary pyramids in normal which are not appreciated in the acute focal lobar nephronia. Another feature of acute uh, focal lobar nephronia is seen on color doppler because of the uh, edema compression of the vessels you, so you see sparse vessels or no vessels in the ill-defined mass. Now here that is the ill-defined mass loss of corticomedullary differentiation and if you put on color so the vessels are not seen in the in the particular area confirming that they are compressed. Now acute pyelonephritis and uh, focal lobar nephronia what is the course? So most of them resolve with the treatment and uh, some because of um, destruction of parenchyma it results in a scar or it can progress to an abscess, a complication of an abscess, renal abscess 
which can rupture either into the perineferic space, collecting system or both. So this is a case of renal abscess which is seen as a hyperchoic mass in the renal parenchyma with acoustic enhancement indicating fluid pus in the mass and debris may be seen as internal echoes and um, on color doppler there will not be any flow within the mass. So these are features of uh, renal abscess with of course the clinical features. Now there are multiple renal abscesses as seen in the kidney in the parenchyma you see one abscess another abscess another abscess here here so multiple abscesses. Now complication of the uh, abscess is uh, a subcapsular abscess as seen here and uh, coronal scan on the periphery and uh, it may be uh, large as seen here the rest of the parenchyma is compressed by the subcapsular abscess which is due to rupture of the renal abscess. Renal abscess can rupture into the perinephric space. You see the renal abscess which is ruptured into the perinephric space with a perinephric abscess. And uh, here in a child uh, of 6 months we use a high frequency scan which shows clearly the kidney, the small renal abscess which has ruptured and produced a biconcave perinephric abscess which is brought on very well with the high frequency scan. Now there are the renal abscess can rupture into the collecting system as seen here that is the renal abscess which is ruptured with uh, pus in the collecting system. You can see the communication between the renal abscess and the calyx brought on with the color doppler by press release movement red and blue alternatively which is seen on the real time. You can see grayscale there is um, uh, communication with the abscess and the calyx which is shown by color doppler by alternating red and blue with the compression. It can rupture both into the collecting system and the perinephric space and uh, which is also seen on real time as the movement of debris from the perinephric space into the collecting system and the abscess. So this is rupture of uh, renal abscess both into the collecting system as well as perinephric uh, abscess or it can extend uh, further outside the kidney as a paranephric abscess. Here you see the kidney, the abscess is extended into the uh, psoas uh, muscle as a paranephric abscess. Then we come to condition of acute emphysematous pyelonephritis which is a life threatening condition of necrotizing infection of the kidney characterized by gas formation within or surrounding the kidneys most common in diabetes in 90% case seen in diabetes rarely in obstruction and the causative organisms are E. coli, Klebsiella and Proteus and anaerobic gas production within the parenchyma results in the gas. It is most often unilateral. It is rapidly progressive to fulminant sepsis and septicemia. Carries a high mortality rate because of septicemia. Now this is a uh, ultrasound of a uh, case of acute aphysimatous pyelonephritis where you see gas within the renal parenchyma or collecting system or both and with or without gas in the perinephric space. So here you see uh, dirty shadowing deep to the gas in the, re in the kidney and uh, in the severe case we see gas uh, in the renal area and the kidney is not seen separate from the gas when there is the uh, amount of gas is very high. So that is one of the classical appearances or you may see an enlarged kidney as seen here with gas uh, within the renal parenchyma and collecting system and perinephric space with the dirty shadowing typical of acute emphysematous pyelonephritis. A little milder form you see the swollen ecopower kidney with the pockets of gas both in the parenchyma collecting system and uh, in the perinephric space. Now very rarely acute emphysematous pyelonephritis may be bilateral as seen in the gas in the right kidney and the left kidney and when it is bilateral patient will be sick and patient may be in renal failure. A variation of emphysematous pyelonephritis is emphysematous pyelitis where the gas is localized to the renal collecting system more common in women associated with diabetes and urinary tract obstruction. Mortality rate is significantly less than that of for the emphysematous pyelonephritis. When the presence of gas in the collecting system it has to be differentiated from calculus because both appear as echogenic spots in the collecting system with shadowing whereas in gas it will be dirty shadowing at times it may not be so marked 
and so in that case when you can change the position of the patient here you see the axial scan of the kidney in supine position you see gas in the calyces whereas when you turn the patient to left lateral decubitus the gas from the calyces moves into the pelvis so the gas is seen in the pelvis confirming that it is gas and not calculus then we move on to the chronic pyelonephritis is a result of multiple recurrent infections or a remote single severe infection the, which has resulted in scarring of the parenchyma which is often associated with vesicouretic reflex or chronic obstruction or calculi now vesicouretic reflex is cause of chronic pyelonephritis reflex when papillary duct orifices are incompetent more common in compound papillae so in the poles begins in childhood because of the reflex and more common in females chronic pyelonephritis uh, is often unilateral if it is bilateral it is asymmetrical in involvement and uh, feature of chronic pyelonephritis is scarring due to fibrosis which results in loss of parenchyma cortical thinning depression on the surface retraction of the papilla resulting in a dilatation or clubbing of the calyx and the scars may be multiple if there are multiple it results in decrease in renal size and irregularity of the contour this is chronic pyelonephritis you see cortical thinning and uh, because of thinning there is depression on the surface and uh, retraction of the papilla results in clubbed calyx or dilatation of the calyx deep to the cortical thinning not the scar and here a typical case of chronic pyelonephritis with multiple scars of thinning parenchyma and dilated calyces which uh, with hypertrophied uh, intervening normal tissue normal parenchyma which mimics a mass and uh, as a result overall asymmetry of the contour of the kidney and because of multiple scars atrophy it results in decrease in the renal size so vesicouretic reflex as a cause of chronic pyelonephritis has to be evaluated ultrasound of the ureterovesical junction will show the jet in red and uh, uh, reflex in blue this is seen in the real time you see the jet followed by uh, reflex vesicouretic reflex that is the jet followed by vesicouretic reflex in blue so ultrasound can pick up vesicouretic reflex next condition of infection is xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis a rare uh, form of uh, chronic destructive granulomatous process from an atypical incomplete immune response to subacute bacterial infection renal parenchyma is ultimately replaced with uh, lipid laden or foamy macrophages most cases occur in association with a renal pelvic calculus which is usually a staghorn calculus and hydronephrosis is thought to be a contributing factor the causative organisms are protes mirabilis and e coli symptoms are often non specific low grade fever and malaise flank pain and hematuria anthogramet spinephritis is rare more common in female diabetes and 4 uh, to 5 decades now this is a ultrasound of typical xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis it shows an enlarged kidney of normal shape but heterogeneous um, parenchyma normal renal architecture of the parenchyma is lost you may see multiple cavities with debris but the classical feature is a large calculus in the renal pelvis this is a very characteristic feature of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis so xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis with fatty replacement appears uh, as a fatty mass in the renal fossa as shown by the arrows uh, with replacing the kidney and a large calculus in the center that is the renal pelvic calculus and the entire renal parenchyma has been replaced with fat then we pass on to fungal infection usually due to candida albicans usually occurs in premature infants females and advanced age diabetics and immunocompromised patients with obstruction and indwelling catheter and patients are usually asymptomatic now this is a premature infant um, shows um, hydronephrosis and uh, fungal balls in the dilated calyces and pelvis and uh, with the uh, perinephric abscess also containing fungal balls that is a fungal infection of uh, premature infant and uh, this is a diabetic with um, obstruction and hydronephrosis 
and uh, the dilated calyces and pelvis are filled with multiple large fungal bulbs. That is very characteristic of fungal infection. Another case of hydronephrosis with fungal balls in the dilated calyces and pelvis and also in the upper ureter. A fungal infection can result in abscess rupture into the collecting system which will show as fungal balls in the dilated calyces, pelvis and uh, ureter. Then we pass on to pyonephrosis. Pyonephrosis is simply an infected and obstructed collecting system. Untreated, a rapid often permanent decline in renal function will result. A patient may develop septic shock. Two cases of pyonephrosis, the dilatation of the pelvic lacel system, echogenic uh, collecting system, you see debris, fluid fluid levels within the collecting system. The, these features give rise to a sensitivity of 90% and accuracy of 96% in diagnosis of pyonephrosis. And then both the cases you see calculate causing the obstruction. So, features are dilatation of the pelvic lacel system, debris as indicated by echoes within the collecting system and uh, the fluid fluid level as shown in the calyx by the arrow. Another case of pyonephrosis, dilatation of the collecting system, echogenic uh, uh, walls of the collecting system, debris in the pelvis and the fluid fluid level. A large pyonephrosis is evidenced by dilated calyces and pelvis with uh, debris and also multiple fluid levels in the collecting system. Now, pyonephrosis may be uh, due to obstruction by urethrocele as seen here. You see the hydronephrosis of the left kidney and in the dilated ureter you see the debris in the ureter and because of the infection there is a total obstruction so no efflux from the urethrocele. Then we pass on to parasitic infestation of the urinary tract. Very rare, uh, renal hydatid disease is rare, 2 to 3 percent. A patient is usually asymptomatic or they may present as flank mass pain and dysuria and they may complicate with the cyst rupturing into the collecting system uh, causing acute renal colic and hydatiduria. Now, renal hydatid is in with two types. Type 1 is unilocular or it may be with multiple daughter cysts. Type 3 is completely calcified and represent the depth of the parasite. Now here you see the type 1 unilocular cyst, the thick bilayered wall and hydatid sand uh, seen within the cyst. Or it may be type 2 with a spoke wheel appearance with because of multiple daughter cysts separated by a fluid matrix. So that is a typical appearance of spoke wheel in a renal hydatid. Now here there is a, a cyst in the parenchyma with internal debris which is uh, ruptured into the collecting system with the dilatation of the calyces and pelvis with the debris in the collecting system that is the hydatid sand filling the collecting system in uh, which can result in acute renal colic and uh, under urine examination there will be hydatiduria. Then we come to condition of papillary necrosis which may be due to analgesic abuse, common in diabetics, it may be due to urinary tract infection, obstruction, dehydration or sickle cell disease or hemophilia. Now in diabetics, papillary necrosis occurs with poor control, it may be due to superadded fungal infection. Now features of papillary necrosis, the swelling of the papilla, it sloughs and gets passed away which may obstruct cause um, hydronephrosis or it may get calcified. Now here this is the high frequency scan of a normal papilla that is the cortex and that is the medulla with the papilla, this is the calyx. So here you see the swollen papilla of papillary necrosis and the uh, papilla gets sloughed off and produces a papillary cavity which is seen as a clubbed calyx and uh, filled with sloughed papilla or it can be passed out and you, you may get calcified in the place of the papilla itself or when it passed out it can cause obstruction. So this is the papillary necrosis, this is normal uh, calyx, normal papilla. In tuberculosis you see the uh, calyx and uh, that is the medulla, there is a papillary cavity communicating with the pelvis, that is the typical appearance of uh, tuberculosis. Whereas here in papillary necrosis, you see the entire papilla necrosed, sloughed off and lying within the clubbed cavity that is in the cavity. So that is sloughed papilla remaining in the papillary cavity 
and um, see that is the sloughed off necrosed papilla in the cavity and when this gets passed out you see only the cavity communicating with the calyx and you don't see the sloughed papilla inside so that is the different appearance of papillary necrosis now here this is a coronal scan coronal scan of the kidney showing multiple papillary necrotic cavities all the uh, papilla have been uh, passed out sloughed papilla have been passed out here you see cavities filled with uh, sloughed papilla and another uh, in the lower calyx which is communicating and uh, it, part of the sloughed papilla have passed out and filling the pelvis and the ureter passed out sloughed papilla can cause obstruction to the ureter with high frequency you see the dilated ureter proximal and the sloughed soft tissue papilla causing the obstruction in the upper ureter and in the lower ureter and that is the ureteroscopy showing the slough papilla in the ureter in the calyx you see the slough papilla after removal of the slough papilla you see the papillary necrotic cavity and that is the removed slough papilla now here you see the papillary necrotic cavity communicating with the dilated calyx because there is hydronephrosis there is also some soft tissue there and you see distally in the lower ureter you see the soft tissue filling the ureter indicating that it is sloughed papilla which is causing the obstruction that is the real time you can see the hydronephrosis you see the cavity in the upper pole parenchyma that is the papillary necrotic cavities another case uh, you see hydronephrosis and you see upper ureter there is a calculus but this is a case of poorly controlled diabetes and if you watch carefully you see the hydronephrosis and you see actually they are communicating with the cavities in the parenchyma so that is papillary necrotic cavities multiple cavities you can see in real time you see the multiple papillary cavities in the parenchyma how to differentiate um, so here papillary necrotic cavities with the echogenic uh, mass causing obstruction it is actually a calcified sloughed papilla which got passed out and causing the obstruction and not a calculus so how to differentiate papillary necrotic cavity versus hydronephrosis so here these are dilated calyces and the parenchyma this is dilated calyces and the cavities so in um, the dilated calyces are confined to uh, the central echogenic area and there is symmetric dilatation whereas in papillary necrosis the cavities are seen in the parenchyma outside the central echogenic area in the parenchyma and they are asymmetric they are not of the same here the calyces are of same size symmetric whereas here it will be asymmetric you can see the cavity is in the parenchyma whereas dilated calyces confined to the central echogenic area so hydronephrosis uh, progression if you see this is mild this is moderate so the calyces are confined dilated calyces are confined to the central echogenic area however much the dilatation is these are the renal pyramids in the parenchyma that is the parenchyma confined to the central echogenic area gross again symmetric there is parenchyma thinning again very gross with high frequency you see the parenchyma made out and very gross very thin parenchyma and finally no parenchyma the it's like it's just a bag of fluid so however much is the dilatation the cavities are not seen in the parenchyma whereas in papillary necrosis you see them in the parenchyma necrosed papilla you see as ring like uh, calcifications in the region of the renal medulla and to cystitis uh, that is the infection of the bladder more in women colonization of the urethra by rectal flora because in women the urethra is short it is common in men usually uh, in case of bladder obstruct obstruction or prostatitis causative organism is e coli the symptoms will be bladder irritability in the form of dysuria frequency or hematuria on ultrasound you see diffuse mucosal thickening or it may be focal mucosal thickening here you see diffuse mucosal thickening of bladder and in color you see hyperemia typical of cystitis and another case you see diffuse mucosal thickening and uh, there is perivesical fat inflammation in a severe case of cystitis with the treatment all of this will disappear there may be focal mucosal thickening as seen here in a case of cystitis now emphysematous cystitis is acute urinary infection which threatens patient's life 
characterized by gas in bladder wall or in the lumen, occurs in diabetes or in urinary tract obstruction. Causative organism is E. coli and Klebsiella pneumonia. So here you see a case of emphysematous pyelonephritis where you see thick walled bladder with gas in the wall as well as in the lumen. And uh, when it is in the wall, you will see all round in the wall. That is typical appearance of emphysematous cystitis. A rare uh, form of cystitis is cystitis glandularis or cystitis cystica. It is a proliferative disorder of urinary bladder, glandular metaplasia of the transitional cells lining the urinary bladder. It occurs due to chronic irritation from infection or calculi. Here in this case you see focal polypoidal wall thickening of the urinary bladder in the region of the trigone and uh, there may be mild obstruction with hydronephrosis or may not be there. And uh, here another case you see the polypoidal thickening of the uh, base in the region of the trigone with tiny cystic areas. So that is uh, typical of cystitis glandularis. The cystitis or the infection of bladder may be extension of adjacent infection like appendicular abscess. Here you see an appendicular abscess which is extending into the wall of the urinary bladder. It can even rupture. So you can see with high frequency the abscess extending into the wall of the urinary bladder or it may be a diverticular abscess. You see an abscess near the dome of the bladder mimicking a uracal mass but in the sigmoid colon you see diverticular. We have to think of um, an abscess due to diverticular. So because of the uninflamed diverticular. So it is confirmed after three months the abscess is ruptured into the bladder resulting in a colovesical fistula which is with evidence of gas in the urinary bladder. Then we pass on to the last component, recurrent urinary tract infection. The UTI follows the complete resolution of a previous UTI. Then you call it recurrent urinary tract infection. A threshold of three UTIs in 12 months is used to signify recurrent UTI. The role of ultrasound in recurrent UTI is to pick up predisposing conditions like anatomical abnormality which may be congenital, acute or voiding dysfunction or obstruction. So those can be picked up or just one example of uh, role of ultrasound in recurrent UTI in this patient. You see the bladder, you see a gas in the urinary bladder and careful scan you see a gas filled tract from the urinary bladder to the colon with a suspicion of colovesical fistula which is confirmed by water enema. You see gush of fluid from the colon uh, by enema into the bladder confirming colovesical fistula as the cause of recurrent urinary tract infection due to diverticular. So you see uninflamed diverticular in the colon confirming that it is uh, due to diverticulosis. Now ultrasound is also useful in guided interventions in correction of predisposing anatomical abnormality like uh, PUG obstruction or vesicoretric reflex and, um, and also in intervening complications like renal abscess or perinephric abscess. Thank you for your patient listening.